cowboy fans and YouTubers. It's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. I make these videos for me and you, and they're a little therapeutic, you know? Time to get stuff off your chest, breathe a little, Ooh, you know, have time to reflect on everything cowboys which is pretty much nothing right now. I guess that's a good thing, because usually the off season is where things tend to get stupid with our players. Uh, free agency is March 18th. They have until March 10th to basically, if they franchise Dak Prescott, to put the tag on him. I think that's stupid. <laughs> you might as well go ahead and uh, just pay the man. I don't know why we keep messing around. Uh, because uh, apparently they were very close last year, but of course they kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and nothing came of it. Uh, Stephen Jones and Jerry, they're all for it. They know. Uh, Dak himself is all for it. So basically, it's just a waiting game as far as we know. Uh, I'm sure they're, the agents are talking money, but more than likely you're not going to hear much until like the, uh, the Combine when uh, ownership groups sit and talk to agents. So you never know. We could see something tomorrow. We could see something today. We could see something in months from now. But as long as we see something, that's good. Uh, I don't know about the haters, because I'm sure there's haters that like still to this day say don't pay the man, but can't come up with anybody better. I mean, they're going to come up with you know, a bunch of names that were basically, let's admit, they were one-hit wonders. Every name that people come up with is either a one-hit wonder or they're a legend somewhere else and they think they can work with we with what we have. Now, in theory, that might have worked somewhere, but now we got a whole new coaching regime mm -hmm. and... Our offense and defense is going to look completely different. Special teams. Ain't no way you could tell me somebody like Tom Brady could just step right in and win Super Bowls. Not going to happen now. So you'd have to think you're going to restart almost from scratch. <coughs> Aside from getting uh, and trying to do this all with a brand new quarterback as well. I mean, we're going to see what Daniel Jones and uh, Dwayne Haskins can do in the division. Because basically, it's like they're rookies all over again. Getting new coaches and uh, new coordinators and all that. So we're going to see in real time if everybody is tr right that, oh, you can just plug in anybody into a system and they're going to be successful. We're about to find out. Uh, it's going to get done. They're going to pay the man. Uh, not much else coming out. You got uh, Jerry Jones basically going up to bat for the uh, CBA and even though we think he's an old curmudgeon who's senile at times due to his <laughs> decisions uh, he does listen to his players he loves his players and like Randy Gregory and David Irvin if their whole thing is that they don't want to play unless something happens with the marijuana rule Jerry Jones is going to help get that marijuana rule changed especially when it has to do with his players I mean it's the right thing to do anyway because you won't find any other league really worrying about marijuana I don't know why the NFL is the only stickler that's still on it um, not too much else uh, we got former uh, Cowboys players down there at the Super Bowl meeting with uh, Dallas Cowboys blogging with the boys and they talk about what experiences they took away from being with the Cowboys. Uh, most of them pretty much have good, glowing things to say about the organization. At the things, the other players sound like it's a little bit of pot shots. Um, they try to say they're first class, but then they'll go to somebody else and say they're a better organization. From top to bottom, they're a championship organization. That's great. You can say that when you're in the championship. <laughs> I mean, you can say the Cowboys suck as a player. 
But when you go into the Super Bowl, you're not even going to say they're not a championship organization because they're there. So, of course, you're going to talk about the organization you're with that is better than what you left. Um, I think uh, Ch Chidendrick, uh, what? Jeez, that boy has a name. The corner we let go because they said we had too many bodies at the position in the first place when we drafted him and had to cut him, unfortunately. Uh, he's the one who has came on and said that the Cowboys gave him a shot and they told him exactly straight up what was up, that they wanted to keep him, but unfortunately, due to the numbers game, he was going to have to be let go. But they told him, you know, go out there, do what he does and put it on tape and somebody's going to take him because he was that talented. Unfortunately, we were dumb enough to let him go because now you see that Byron Jones may not come back and Anthony Brown may not come back. So now we could have used somebody who's still on a rookie, uh, undrafted rookie free agent wage. That would have been great instead of trying to pay these guys. Um, we see people saying take by, uh, let Byron Jones walk and keep Anthony Brown. That would be great if Anthony Brown was any good. <laughs> I mean, y'all could pay him for cheap, but other than his rookie season, he hasn't shown up to play at all. 2016, uh, he was good in his spot duty, and they appreciated that, and they kept him on and tried different roles for him, thinking he could be good, but 2017, 2018, 2019 come and go, and the man's basically regressed. Uh, there's too many penalties. He's out of position. He misses open field tackles. Uh, they tried him on the outside. Didn't work out. They tried him on the slot. Didn't work out. And the only reason you had a job is because Chris Richard thought you were better prototypical physically than Jordan Lewis. And Jordan Lewis has proved that he can play outside and inside in his uh, spot duty roles when he had to play. But, you know, old coaching regime weren't exactly forward thinking. They were stuck in their ways and that was not going to change. Hmm. Sounds like a head coach that we know. Uh, so, uh, Prescott, we're going to have to keep. Cooper Rush, I think you could draft or get an undrafted free agent that can play better than him, Cooper Rush. Uh, you got Clayton Thorson. He's on the team, but, you know, he's a futures contract, and nobody's seen him play, really. He hasn't thrown a pass in a preseason or a regular season, so we don't know what he really brings to the table other than a camp arm. So we'll have to see where that goes. Um, running backs. Uh, with the guys basically coming back all, all that we have had last year, hopefully we'll put more emphasis on uh, getting Tony Pollard out on the field. Because uh, in his limited duties, he looked pretty good. Other than when the teams knew to come out and shut him down, he looked pretty good. Uh Jimmy Zolawazi, uh the fullback. I, if you're not going to use him, why'd you pay him? I mean, you put him on a three-year contract just to have him basically sit the whole season. He missed 98% of the snaps throughout the year. He played in 2% of the snaps the whole season. And that was basically getting thrown to once he in completion and uh th in the last year <laughs> that was pretty much it uh this season that was pretty much it he did one block that's it they had zeke in as a fullback blocking for pollard in most plays what was the point of having a fullback if you're going to use another running back to block and you're wearing down zeke even more by having him out there blocking for another running back now if you're not going to utilize both the guys into a disguising the offense i'm not trying to have my best running back out there getting pounded by d lineman that's stupid <laughs> that's what i have a fullback for because he's built to take on d lineman not my premier running back i mean when he's has to uh, block in a passing scheme sure but 
you know, he can just, you know, go down. <laughs> he doesn't have to run full speed at somebody and try to knock them down. Uh, wide receivers, we don't know what's going to happen with Coop. They may give him a tag. Uh, they want to pay him, but they more than likely don't want to pay him Michael Thomas money. They don't want to pay him uh, Odell Beckham money. So he's going to come down to the next tier of wide receivers. Uh, he wants to stay in Dallas. We want him to stay in Dallas. Uh, it's just going to come down to financials on basically all our free agents. If you really want to play for the team, they're going to keep asking for this so-called home team discount. Just because uh, due to just not paying your guys beforehand when the prices were low, you screwed yourselves. I mean, you let Tank Lawrence sit there and go into almost free agency and had to pay him so much money just because you didn't get the deal done the season before. Same with Prescott. You could have had him at 30 million, but you mucked around and let all these other quarterbacks get paid and now you're stuck. And basically, I, it's great we're at our salary cap hell, but you keep doing this to these players, they're not going to want to play. I mean, why should I wait to the last minute for you to come up with a deal and then if it's not to my satisfaction, I walk. And then everybody thinks I'm the bad guy because I walked away from money that you could have offered me last year that would have been fine before everybody else got paid. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, I don't think that's what fans are understanding. For some reason, they're so mad. Ah, Y'all should take less money because Dak Prescott sucks. Like, well, if he sucks... Why are backups making more money than him? That's the situation. <laughs> the man has been on a home team discount for his whole rookie contract and never complained. And you didn't put a team around him to win, but it's his fault now that he wants to get paid. That's stupid. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, special teams coordinator John Fossil has come out and uh, basically said exactly what we want to say. He wants to turn that special teams around to where it's not just there. It's part of a game. It's not just, oh, these special team guys, they're nothing. They're just, you know, out here to stop a guy from punting, kicking, you know. They want to create turnovers. They want to pin somebody back in their one-yard line. They want to return the ball to the house. You know, they want to do something to make an impact, too. It's not just offense and defense, not for them. And, you know, with so much turnover, it's going to be hard to basically fill the team right now. So we'll have to see who's retained or who they bring in because it could change the whole dynamic. We're going to need a new returner, a uh, return man, uh, punts and kicks because I don't want Tony Pollard doing it. I don't want Randall Cobb if he comes back doing it. And Tavon Austin more likely is not coming back, but he was the best guy you had at the position, but he never got a chance to take it back because the rest of the special teams unit sucked. He never got a chance to do anything but fair catch. Uh, <laughs> defense, of course, is going to be a complete overhaul. Uh, we're going with a 4-3 hybrid scheme, so that's going to look completely different, hopefully where we won't just sit there and know they're just going to stunt and that's it. They're not going to, you know, move around in the backfield for us to wonder who's coming, who's not coming. Uh, the offense should look the same as far as lining up and everything, but hopefully it's more play action. Hopefully there's not to say trick plays, but more designed plays to, even though you know it's coming, you really can't stop it because we threw a new wrinkle at it, you know? Uh, you know, just trying something different. I mean, how often do you see, like, a wide receiver come back and line up as a running back in his position and take the ball? You never see that. You never see, like, Zeke run out into, a, into the slot and have a wide receiver come back. I mean, when you had Austin, you could have done something sneaky like that, but you never thought about it. I don't recall anybody who's really done that. But, you know, it's going to be a collaborative effort. 
as they've told us, Keller Moore is going to have Mike McCarthy's input, uh, Nussmeyer's. Uh, they're going to figure out a game plan that fits what they've already done that was successful and try to come up with something new. So we'll just have to see how that flies because we're not going to keep the Eric Coriel offense anymore that uh, Garrett was known for. We're going with more West Coast offense. Uh, so you should still be seeing the plays that we've done, but you should be seeing the ball getting pushed down the field more. Uh, you should be seeing the wide receiver, the, uh, excuse me, the running backs getting involved more. So we're just going to have to see. Uh, we don't need to air it out like everybody else. Uh, I don't mind Dak Dinkin and Duncan. If you ding a dunk and somebody can take it to the house, I don't give a damn what they call you. <laughs> as long as you score. Uh, but that's pretty much all I got right now. Uh, there's Super Bowl week going on. Uh, they're trying to do the CBA. Uh, there's just so much going on. Because after this Sunday, it's the off season, y'all. We're going to have XFL, apparently. Uh, we're going to be looking at draft play, uh, draft coming up, the combine. Uh, unfortunately, 17 still isn't the best position to be in draft-wise, but it's better than where we were uh, the last couple seasons when we're uh, drafting in like 22, 23, something like that, where you know and pretty much guarantee that a lot of the players you want to be gone. At least you're about midway through the draft. So some of the players on your board more than likely will still be there. And uh, I like it because these last couple drafts, everybody knew who we wanted. Everybody knew what position group we were looking at. And I swear some of these teams that are in front of us literally pick the players we want just because they know we're aiming for them. Dallas Goddard. I can guarantee you Dallas was going to go for Dallas, except the Eagles knew that, so they took him, and it's worked out for them. That's great. Um, I know more than likely that if we were looking at TJ Watt, somebody would have taken TJ Watt before we'd have got to that number, but they knew we wanted in, so they weren't too worried about him as a linebacker getting taken because they knew we needed edge rusher. Uh, there's been other instances the past couple years that players we wanted got off the board a couple picks before we got on. And people knew it. But we'll have to see. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a run on safeties this year. Like talking about. So more than likely, this will be the second straight year we're going to have a shot at a premier safety. Uh, it's just if the Cowboys are going to pull that trigger in the first round, second round, or at any point in the draft, or if they're going to emphasize that dumpster of a nose tackle to fill out the line, or if they'll address that in free agency. We don't know. So we'll just have to see over the next couple months what's going to happen, how they're going to shape the roster, uh, how much more discipline we're going to get on the coaching staff because – Lord knows we keep hiring people almost every day and in, in roles that we don't really hear about, mentorships and stuff like that, quality control. Uh, we don't hear about that stuff normally when coaches are getting hired, unless it's a name, which most of them are names. But they're going to bring a whole level of accountability. So we're not going to see these players slacking off because uh, they're not going to have it. They know they were brought in to take us back to the playoffs, get through the playoffs, and win a championship. So they're not going to be around messing around because they know their jobs hinge on where the Cowboys finish their seasons. Unlike Jason Garrett, who could care less. He knew his job was pretty much guaranteed. That's why he just didn't care. Uh, and he knew as long as he was there, his boys were going to be there. And that's why we just got stuck in mediocrity because nobody was scared of ever being fired. And their players weren't scared of them being disciplined. And it just fell apart. 
But that's all going to change. And we can't wait. We're excited for it. We fans are hoping that these that we can get back to being the Cowboys that we love and respect. But we'll have to see. All right, I'm almost at my job. I hope you guys have a good hump day. Talk to y'all later. If anything breaks, we'll get back to you. Other than that, peace.